Before we dive in and look at the first build order, we should make sure that we're wearing our swimming cap and goggles. Getting set up right is going to make it much easier to get off to a good start. In this video, we'll go over some essential mods, the correct in-game settings, and the best mouse settings for Age of Empires 2. Age of Empires is a pretty game, but those tall trees have got to go. The trees can really hurt your vision in-game, especially if you have villagers chopping wood behind them. The trees obscuring your vision may also mean that you don't spot a hole, or generally make it harder to see things such as boar or deer. You won't find anybody who's playing this game seriously who isn't using a small trees mod. If you're on the HD edition, it's as easy as subscribing to the small trees mod on the Steam Workshop. A direct link to all of the mods in this video can be found below. With the trees out of the way, it's time to make the game even uglier with the grid mod. There are various grid mods out there, but they all achieve the same effect with varying degrees of obnoxiousness. Grid mod is really useful though. It helps you to spot holes in walls, align your buildings, and even check the range of your buildings or units. A great example of this is when doing a tower rush. You won't have to make a wild guess at the range of your tower as you'll simply be able to count the squares. Those are the big two mods, but there's a couple of extra handy ones. One of my favourites is the idle pointer mod, which puts massive exclamation points above your villagers if they aren't doing anything. This is so useful for spotting idle villagers and reminding you to keep on top of your economy. A lazy villager is an idle villager, and idle villagers lose games. You may also like to get a texture pack. Some texture packs are all about the detail, adding loads of different colours and generally making the game look pretty. But if the first two mods in this video haven't taught you already, our goal is not to make the game look pretty, but make it functional. A personal favourite of mine is the smoothie texture pack, and this one even comes with a grid built in. You may even see this texture pack in some future videos, as it helps to keep things clear and easy to see, which is exactly what we're trying to achieve. There's hundreds of texture packs on the Steam Workshop though, so find one that you like or stick with the defaults as they're totally fine as well. Finally, a handy mod which shows you the tech tree of your civilization on the UI as a reminder of which units you can build and techs you can research. This one may not be super useful to you at first, but it will definitely help you to learn your civilizations as you play. Since there's 31 civilizations in the game now, it can take some time to remember it all. I've added all of these into a Steam collection so that it's possible to subscribe to all of them with just one click or pick and choose whichever you like. Now you've got your mods, it's time to launch the game and fix your settings. Open the options menu and look at your scroll inertia. Bring it down to zero. Having scroll inertia on might make scrolling smoother, but it is going to cause you to overshoot all the time and spend too much time fiddling around trying to get the camera in the right place. It could be nice for campaigns and single player, but for multiplayer, it's got to go. Now, copy the checkboxes as you see here, and we're good to move on to the match settings. When you play multiplayer, the standard competitive settings are standard resources, 200 population, normal speed, and normal reveal map. Victory should be conquest, and team together and locked teams should be on. At lower levels, I'm always seeing people playing on fast speed or with 300 population. And while these are absolutely fine for casual fun games, it's a pretty bad idea to practice on these settings if you actually want to improve. You're going to find it way harder to follow a build order on fast speed. You're going to make way more mistakes, and you're never really going to learn good habits when the game is whizzing by out of your control. It also pays to practice the competitive settings, because when you do improve and get better, you're not going to find anyone to play with who's actually willing to play with different settings. Finally, I want to talk about the mouse, because having your mouse set up well will definitely help you. Being able to accurately select units and place buildings is an important part of the game, and having good mouse settings can help you out. First, let's go to our mouse settings in Windows. 
go to the pointer options tab and make sure that your pointer speed is in the middle and enhance pointer precision is off. Sounds weird. I just said you need to precisely select units. Why would I ensure that pointer precision is off? Well, selecting this option actually turns on mouse acceleration, which is bad. Your mouse movement on screen should always be consistent with your hand movement. Moving your hand one centimeter to the left should always move your pointer on screen the same distance. By enabling mouse acceleration, the speed at which you move your mouse will vary how far the pointer will move, and you absolutely do not want this. There's a video linked below showing how mouse acceleration affects things if you're curious. And lastly, we need to talk about DPI, or as you may know it, mouse sensitivity. Now guys, you're not trying to set your DPI as your target for your ELO. I see people out there with 4000, 3000, 2000 DPI, and you're shooting yourself in the foot when it comes to mouse accuracy. Now as someone who plays a lot of FPS, my DPI is probably on the low side at 400. Now I would recommend bringing your DPI down as low as you can go so that you're basically using all of your mouse pad to bring your cursor from the left to the right of your screen. You have a mouse pad for a reason, so use it. Unless of course you don't have a mouse pad, in which case I would absolutely recommend getting one. A mouse pad provides a consistent surface and reduces mouse jitter and inconsistencies with your pointer. When you've got your DPI so high, that moving your mouse a centimeter will send your pointer flying across your screen, your accuracy is going to suffer. The lower your DPI, the more accurately you can move your pointer. It's simple. But it's surprising to me how many out there actually have DPI set way too high. For some reason, mice seem to be advertised with how much DPI they have, like having 10,000 DPI is even remotely usable. Now, if you're using a trackpad, just set the DPI to whatever you like, because absolutely nothing in the world is going to help you there. Now, of course, Age of Empires 2 isn't CSGO, where aim is hyper important, but it does help to be able to select your villagers accurately without sending your pointer into space every time you move your mouse just a little bit. Well, that about wraps up this video, and if you followed all the steps here, you'll be correctly set up and ready to go. The next video in this series is all about the first five minutes of the game, giving you a solid Dark Age build order which you can use with every single civilization. But for now, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.